I decided to create a new Reading 90 class that was based more fully on open educational resources. So going back a little bit, um, I've taught Reading 90 a couple of times and to cut down on textbook costs I've used um, Arthur Conan Doyle's first Sherlock Holmes story which was A Study in Scarlet and it's been out of copyright for years so that book it is available for free, but most students choose to purchase the book, and it's about nine dollars. Um, but I was also using a textbook, which was um, and now I've forgotten the name of it. It'll come to me in a second. Um, oh, making reading relevant, which was thirty-five to fifty dollars, depending, and it's just gone into a new edition. So I was really interested in both replacing the information that was in that textbook with open educational resources and with finding a better way to incorporate the Sherlock Holmes book more fully into the class because it felt like we had a lot of discussions that were just about the novel and then just about what was in the textbook but we weren't using the novel always to line up with the textbook so I wanted to draw them together as I was working on this project so uh, the other challenge that I faced here is that I actually wanted to get a little bit away from Moodle. Uh, and there are two reasons for this. One, I think I, I really like Moodle. I work with it all the time. But I feel like some of the limitations it has um, can keep students from using it and can be intimidating because it's one more thing to learn to log into and it's one more thing that has all this stuff happening all the time. And uh, so I wanted to lower even another barrier toward getting them the content, getting them access to things. And also, uh, you know, selfishly, I think the chances that I'm actually going to get to teach this class are really low. It doesn't usually fill up in the fall. And uh, since my future of teaching at Lane was pretty uncertain, or at least pretty certainly coming to an end soon, I wanted to create something that was open on the web that anybody could access, not just locked within Moodle in the Lane system. So that brings us to what's on the screen, which is I started creating a website, well, a blog site through WordPress that operates mostly like a website. And this is my Reading 90 page. Um, and so I wanted to put as much as I possibly could on here, anything that didn't need to be restricted behind a wall of some kind. And then the idea is that during the term, so how I have it organized now, there's a sticky post that has the entire schedule on it, but during an actual term, this would just, each week a new post would be added with the week's assignments and links. Um, but up at the top you can see I've got an outside reading link already, so that if students just want to see all of the readings for the term all in one place, they could click there. And I'm thinking that I might use that in a face-to-face -face class during the first week to have the students go to, say, the computer lab or make it a first assignment at the library where they would just go and need to print out all of their readings all at once to construct their own packet and then I would give them points for um, bringing that packet to class. So there are readings under outside readings and all of their quizzes for Reading 90 can also be accessed through the quizzes link. Um, it says quizzes, but they're actually reading guides, they're discussion questions that I ask them to do either before or after they've completed the readings from the text. So they can take these home and use them uh, to help figure out where they should be focusing on the reading, and then they provide a basis for our discussions in class. So I created uh, six or seven quizzes for use in the Sherlock Holmes book, and they're all in Google Forms, actually. Uh, so students can respond to them online in an online class. Uh, that would work best, but they're also really easy to print out and bring to class and just write on the page. So that was the advice that I gave to this hypothetical face-to-face -face class. So let me take you through the pieces. Um, like I said, the textbook is A Study in Scarlet, and it's available at Project Gutenberg. And uh, it's about 100 pages long, so students could print it in four sessions of 25 pages or however they'd like. Um, and we do about 20 pages a week, so that's, you know, not not the swiftest progress, but it will get us through the book. 
with lots of time to discuss things. And then I outlined how they'll be evaluated. So reading comprehension, quizzes, and then there are um, two tests that will be given and I posted the final exam to Moodle um, and I usually do a take home midterm that they can do uh, depending on how far we get by week five. And then, like I said before, these would show up as individual posts during a term. But for right now, I just put everything all on the one sticky page at the front. So, uh, there's a reading on. Now, I was I started by trying to duplicate pretty much the information that I'd found from Making Reading Relevant and um, the Kathleen McWhorter book. Uh, but I ended up changing some emphasis. So, we still start with context. Uh, and root words because I think it's important. So I found some really great online presentations that had already been set up and uh, made a few alterations to one of them. Um, so they can either do a reading, view a presentation, so something there for visual learners and um, for more... Actually they're both visual learners. Uh, and then I decided to start, instead of just digging straight into the novel, I decided that it would be valuable to include context for it so that students could understand not just that we're reading Sherlock Holmes, but also why everybody still reads Sherlock Holmes or everybody still heard of him. So this is the first one. It's a brief biography from PBS on their website. It's part of an educational series uh, that they did. It, this is actually from a a larger work on Harry Houdini. So it puts him in a context of his time and talks a lot about his um, beliefs in spirituality, which come into our discussion later when we talk about why this book is banned. So, And then uh, I actually uh, had a conversation with Gail Kesey about her presentation on word roots, and she said it would be fine to use for class. So this is one of those resources that could be used as is or printed out into a packet for students to use as a resource for OER and um, I'm hoping to still make some alterations to her presentation as well um, through conversation with her. Uh, and then I gave them a short activity to complete that would be starting to come up with a list of unfamiliar root words of their own and then in class the activity would be to compile a sort of class master glossary of some of these roots that keep showing up, that keep popping up, and to come back to that once we get into the Sherlock Holmes, which has more difficult language. Uh, then for week two, I created an active reading Prezi that has audio attached to it as well, so they can hear kind of a mini lecture before they come into class for the main event lecture, and that would lead into uh, a reading called The Implicit Sherlock Holmes, which is a Creative Commons licensed piece from the uh, Baker Street Journal, which is all about Sherlock Holmes. Uh, and this is where they start working on summaries, which is one of the learning outcomes for the class. So once everyone's done the active reading, read the same piece, then they'd bring their summaries to class, and before they'd actually turn in a final, they would have a chance to meet in groups and discuss where their summaries are alike and different which can help with the overall comprehension um, and understanding so that they can see that really reciting things to their peers can help increase their understanding as well. Then for week three we move into note-taking methods and learning from reading through writing a bit. Um, I've always found that Cornell notes seem to be both the most difficult and most valuable for students of the note-taking methods that they learn. And so I wanted to get that in at the beginning. Um, week three is really going to focus on those. And um, this reading is Study in Scarlet by Chris Rutledge, which is also a um, Creative Commons licensed piece, is actually very dense. It's written for a high level, I'd say college level uh, audience. It has a lot of words that would be unfamiliar probably to a Reading 90 class. And so I like that. I think it sets up a really interesting challenge at the beginning of the term. It's trying to put Sherlock Holmes into a context that includes a lot of readings that these students may not have done or wouldn't remember having done. And it is just 
full of uh, vocabulary words and um, things that they could easily have questions about in Cornell Notes. So I thought this would really set us up well for learning how to use Cornell Notes to deal with an unfamiliar text. So my plan with this is to have them read it and then model the Cornell Notes process in class after they've tried it as well. So kind of an apprenticeship in note taking. Um, week four is when we actually get into the novel. And as you can see, there's a quiz they need to complete before the first class. Same story in week five. Uh, we get into topics and main ideas. And so now we start to really lean on the novel and its pieces. And um, there's this really wonderful presentation on identifying topics that had questions that the students need to answer about uh, how that process works. And I thought that was a useful thing to have before we start our in-class discussion when we would model finding the main ideas of top of chapters um, with a review in class. Week five, we're looking for organizational patterns. And uh, this one, I, I'll probably bring in textbooks from outside, as it, sh as it says here. Uh, I think there's some really useful paragraphs that we'll look at more specifically in a study in Scarlet. Uh, and I've, activities are listed here in orange, assignments that they'll have individually in class. Um, critical thinking and analysis. So they've reached the end of part one of the Sherlock Holmes book at this point, which it's about to take a major turn. They've found the killer, but now they have to explain why he's the killer. And, and this becomes a really good point to start talking about how we think of things overall, not just piece by piece. So uh, there's an excellent chapter on critical thinking that comes from a now defunct site that used to host a lot of OER pieces. Um, I think they used to have the Flat World Knowledge Handbook. And, uh, anyway, this chapter on critical thinking is still available under that license. So. It's geared toward a higher level class. I'd say it's 115, 121, but this chapter can be pulled out and used for a reading 90 audience pretty convincingly. So I was glad to find that. And then um, they can use the 20 questions to reflect on their own reading or on uh, the reading about our specific book, and that would provide a springboard for the midterm self analysis that they'll find on Moodle. Um, week seven, second type of note taking, or I'm sorry, reading system this time. And since this one usually lines up more directly with a textbook than it would with a novel, um, I would use the novel here, as it says, um, as an outside model for it, but also I'd have them uh, work in class on some articles that I'd hand out and I provide those links under outside reading. And then this is where they get into their final project. So I created a brief research assignment um, because in this chapter it's the first time we see Brigham Young introduced in the book. So they're going to research him as a person and start to figure out the context of why Arthur Conan Doyle uh, used him and uh, the Mormon faith in sort of a villain's role in the second part of the book. And that leads us into evaluating online resources where we would take a visit to the library. Um, and we'd also start on the final project. You can see there's a link there, and I've put that on the digital collaboration site as well. Um, they're going to compare the original Sherlock Holmes to the more modern adaptations as a way of analyzing between two different sources, analyzing two different readings, looking at context, and um, then creating something new out of what they've discovered. So week nine, we're still working with sources and uh, things like that. Week 10, then they would have a presentation, and this is all explained above in that research assignment uh, to the class where they have to create a comparison between two characters and talk about why they changed between the two works. And I'm running out of time. So that's my OER for Reading 90. Thanks.